Across the pond after a violent week, Prime Minister David Cameron saying that uh, do not blame the weak economy. The street's been quiet today as Britons look to U.S. security experts for some help. Liberals there fueling the argument keeping the peace costs money and cutting spending on peacekeepers there is bad. To Mark Stein, he's not surprised that this is being picked apart. What do you think, Mark? Well, this, this is basically uh, the same story as the downgrade, uh, Neil, because uh, this is the logical end point of the big government welfare society. Uh, these people have been marinated in stimulus, in the Obama word, their entire lives, and they are the children of stimulus, the children of dependency. Who are the uh, people protesting, the then? Who, who are they really? Well, they're, they're, they're people, uh, uh, one-fifth of uh, British households, one-fifth of British children are raised in households where nobody works. One-tenth of British adults have not done a day's work since Tony Blair became Prime Minister on May the 1st, 1997. This is lifelong dependency, multi-generational dependency. You wind up with people who, feral beasts, who know nothing but to lob concrete through shop windows to steal the latest electronic toys. So they blame Cameron for reigning on that parade? Yes, because, because uh, the, the uh, welfare state is unaffordable. And he, uh, your previous guest was saying they admire David Cameron for taking a deal of uh, two to one uh, in terms of spending cuts versus revenue raising. But, but what we see on the street is the hollowness of that policy and the wickedness of that policy. These are people who have no understanding uh, that human self-worth and dignity uh, comes with getting up in the morning, dressing, uh, going off and doing a day's work and providing for your loved ones. That, that, that is a lost world to these people. I'm just wondering if you're President Obama or any of the, the ruling parties in Washington and you're looking at these demonstrations and saying, look, we got to make some tough cuts, tough decisions, or at least curb the growth of some of these programs that people have just come to expect, even though the money isn't there for them to expect, uh, that they might hold back for fear that it gets just like that here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've got a chapter in my book that deals with just that scenario, and I quote the Gerald Ford line, you know, a government big enough to give you everything you want is big enough to take away everything you have. But the problem is, that there's an intervening stage, that a government big enough to give you everything you want isn't big enough to persuade you to give any of it back when times get tough. Hmm. And what we see in London, what we see in Athens, what we see in Madison, Wisconsin, uh, is, that, uh, is the selfishness of the so-called uh, dependency communitarian culture, that in the end, when times get tough, uh, people say, no, I want my pension. No, I want my benefits. No, I want to retire at 53, no matter if it bankrupts the state. So when you and we in this country see all these protesters in all of these countries, are, are they speaking for the majority or, or are we missing the silent majority? Uh, Spiro Agnew, Richard Nixon and, and Ronald Reagan, all these other guys used to talk about years ago. What's the real deal? Well, I think Rich well, I would say Nixon's silent majority has got quite a bit smaller till, uh, since then. And if you look at, say, Greece, the, the productive class is caught in a pincer movement between the government class and the dependency class. They function as a kind of good cop, bad cop routine, squeezing the productive class from both ends. You see that in California, where, where, where the people who have to pay uh, both for the bureaucracy and for the dependency uh, eventually get sick of that burden and start to leave the state. Uh, and I think, I think the, the danger in a country like Greece is that it, uh, if, you, if you've got a, a, a great business idea in Athens, the best thing you can do is buy a one-way ticket out of there. There's no, point, there's no point trying to develop that business idea uh, in, the, in the climate in Greece. Uh, and the danger is that once the state and its dependents get to a certain size, then the productive class just gets crushed by this great rotting dead albatross of dependency and benefits and welfare and stimulus uh, that the government hangs around its neck. We don't want to wind up like London. All right. You think this guy speaks well. You should read the way he writes after America, uh, running up the bestseller charts. Mark Stein, thank you very much. Good seeing you again. Always a pleasure, Neil.